Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Breakthrough Podcast. My name is Josh Rosales, host. I'm super excited this morning to have Clayton on with us, and we're going to be talking all things social media. And so if you're watching or listening, uh, welcome in. Hope you can get something out of it, which I know you will. We're going to be asking some great questions, going over some, uh, some questions that you may ask yourself every day. And we're going to get the answer because we got the expert in the room. We got Clayton. And so, Clayton, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, I'm very excited to see what we talk about and see who we help. I'm excited. Definitely. Well, getting into our conversation before uh, before we, we went, uh, before we started recording, you know, it was um, it was crazy because, I mean, I've when yeah through through networking I have to back up here a little bit because when i when i met my wife uh her mom and dad pastor a spanish church here in nashville okay. and i got into um working with young people and working in the hispanic community and through that uh, they had always been doing a lot of nonprofit work through the church but i got them together and say, Hey, we need to do a 501 C three. Once with the 501 C three, like I started, well, even before that, I was started networking and uh, I've always loved talking to people. I'm just, uh, just, I never meet a stranger. Like we could be standing in Starbucks and I could start a conversation up with someone. And my wife was like, I'm you were here for us, not for you to start a conversation with somebody in line. Like, can you just turn it off? And I'm just like, I can't help it. It's just me. Like I love to network. There's three questions that I always ask is who are you? What are you doing? How can we network? We may not be able to network right now, but doesn't mean that we can't network in the future. And so um, just doing that, it's, I just love talking to people. I find people fascinating. Uh, I find what they do fascinating. You know, I work for a financial institution. I manage a bank. Um, and so the one cool thing that I really see about myself is that I get to talk with so many different people from so many different walks of life in different industries. And it's like, just because I'm sitting in front of somebody, like I can talk to you about business, but once I get to know you, you know, I don't know who you're connected to. I don't even know who you are. And it's like, you could hold the key to, you know, to what I need or a connection that I have. You know, a lot of people don't understand about being a center of influence and network connecting, you know? And so that's where I love to, um, to, that's what I love to do is, is, is do that. And so the podcast uh, for me and a few guys, we got together that are on my board and we're like, you know what, we should do something every morning because we're always meeting incredible people, um, listening to their stories. And, and it's just like, wow, like we really like share their stories. And so we, we called it brew with the crew uh, in the mornings. Uh, and so we would have guests on. And so it's kind of like our nonprofit is called breakthrough Nashville. And so I was kind of like, you know what, let's just go, you know, breakthrough mindsets, you know, or, or breakthrough you. Uh, so breaking through mindset and having more uh, entrepreneurs and just incredible people that are doing incredible things on talking about what they do, how they're connecting the dots, uh, for other entrepreneurs. And so that's just kind of how, how it got started. I love talking. So like my, <laughs> we never have, I never have a, it's never a dull moment uh, for me, but it's just talking, but yet finding out about people. And I, I noticed that in a sales environment um, that when relationships are high, sales pressure is low. And when sales pressure is high, that means relationships are low. And, you know, we talk about sales and all that, but it's, you know, more mar marketing yourself. It's not about what you can get or what you can sell someone. It's about the relationship that you can build and forge and how you can network together and how you can exchange value. So that's this is how it's all. So it's just really been, uh, I want this to be more of a resource to those that listen and watch um, that they can be able to listen, uh, maybe and jot down some notes, some lessons, learn some takeaways, maybe a favorite book, a podcast, a YouTube channel that they can, they can, and then also give them an opportunity to reach out to you, you know, uh, when we uh, put you, uh, tag you in our, in our posts and, just be a connection for me, you know, be a yeah. connection for me and then building that relationship as well. So, yes. So I, I have, uh, 
yeah, it's 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 crazy. But I love I love what I do. Like this awesome. is hopefully you know some down the sometime down the road this will turn into um, my passion will turn into my job. Kind of say which is never a job when you love doing what you're doing. Right. So, well, cool man. Let's hop into this. Uh, I got I got some questions that that I want to ask. Um, that's the other thing about a podcast is like. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible because I can get experts that I'm talking to and through the conversation, answer questions that I have as well that I know other people may have. And it's a great business card. Like, you know, you, you network and you're like, Hey, here's my card. And you're like, Oh, here. Okay, cool. And then sometimes it works. Sometimes you, you know, you, you network, sometimes you don't, but you're like, Hey, I'd love for you to be on my podcast. And they're like, Oh yeah, I would love to. And it's just like, it's just brings that relationship closer than, than a business card could ever bring a relationship okay. in my opinion. But yeah. So, um, so f- number one, thank you again for, for coming on. And, um, you know, if you know, you said you're on the East coast, right? I am. Yep. Uh, okay. Northeast Tennessee. Yep. Northeast Tennessee. Northeast. So what counties or cities are around? Well, I'm, I'm located in Jonesboro, which is a smaller town, but it's right beside Johnson City. That's really the main. Oh, North yes. So I'm, I'm yeah. next door to Johnson City. OK, awesome. Awesome. So let's hop into this. Um, so um, tell us tell us about yourself, Clayton. And um, I saw you holding a camera in your in your um profile picture are you a photographer as well yeah yeah so that's that is something that i picked up when i saw that fitness professionals were lacking they were lacking good content and uh, just good pictures in general and so i saw a need and so i got a camera with my last stimulus check and uh it just became um not so much of a side hustle anymore um it's actually a vital part to what the fitness professionals are trying to do so it makes them happy, so it makes me happy. So you see that as, uh, so you saw that as a as a need, and I think that I mean that is what a, an entrepreneur does, right? They see mm-hmm. that hey, there's a need, and let me meet that need. Yep. And so, do you um, do you like go to them, or do you go do you, do you meet them when they're working out, and you're just taking pictures of them, or it, any of it, all of the above? We have a gym here that my girlfriend owns in Jonesboro. And so very good lighting in there. That's our like central spot or like headquarters. And so they can either come there to Danielle Marie Marie Fitness or um, I travel around to other local gyms uh, just to try to broaden my networking and uh, just go around and do that. And when you get it and when you get a camera and like when you have a camera in front of you, you either scare people away or people run to you. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Excuse me. So um, it's always a toss up. But it's always exciting and it's really cool to capture those moments when you know somebody's lost a lot of weight or put on a lot of muscle and then they get you capture it and then you get to give it to them so uh i found that to be very rewarding it's been it's been nice yeah but they they need it good content is is right up there if you want to attract people to you so exactly so how did you become a social media expert like what was that process uh totally did not, I did not expect it. I did not really, um, I didn't even really dive into a personal page very much. I didn't, I don't really post much on there, but, um, when I started fitness compass about two years ago in September, we had such a big community of people and gyms and, um, entrepreneurs and everybody like that, that they came into the group and then they were kind of like, okay, what do we do next? And I was like, oh, I got to find out what to do next. And so I started leading that group and started following trends, um, getting the camera, getting photos for them, helping them structure their posts and their content and their um, their week and everything like that. And then um, I found out that I was pretty good at it and just started asking more people to follow me. And that's what it's turned into. So it was not expected. I just didn't give up. Um, if I would have given up on my first idea, which was selling day passes to independently owned gyms. I would have sunk. Um, but it was just one of those things where you have to adapt and survive. So um, just kind of got pushed into it. That is cool because uh, social media, there's such a need right now. Uh, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that, that still don't know how to do social media and do it right. I mean, because you can yeah. do social media, but you got to do it, do it right. 
um, what are some of the lessons learned early on um, on your journey to become uh, a so social media expert? Uh, and the main thing was, for me, everything changed when I hired a mentor myself. And then mm. realized that my first month and a quarter or my first year and a couple of months was had no direction. Really, it was just kind of aimless. And I wasted a lot of time and a lot of money. And so that's that's one of those things that you have to be coachable and you got to know what direction you're going in. <laughs> because um, if you don't, you're going to waste a lot of time. And I made a huge mistake early on by spending like half of my savings on an LLC and a website when I didn't even need that. And so I'm here to help others not do that. Um, but that's the only thing I just, I need to learn how to be coachable, learn how to take constructive criticism in a game that I wasn't, uh, you know, uh, vetted, I wasn't in very long. And so that was another thing too, so. You said something as uh, being coachable. I think a lot of people have a, a, a struggle with that. It's because of that P-R-I-D-E, right? Pride. And uh, so it's, uh, they're like, no, I got this, right? And sometimes you got to be like, you know what? I don't have this. I need advice. I need a mentor. And we're, I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to ask you uh, about, that because I feel like mentorship plays such an important role, especially in your growth, because you can only do so much. And after that, you have to, you have to get a mentor to to really help you uh, take you um, the, the rest of the way. And actually people need mentors just for life, you know, oh, just yeah. th throughout their life. And so, um, so let me ask you how, I know you said you assist um, in the fitness industry, um, but how do you, how do you help and assist individuals and business owners with, in, with their social and increasing their engagement? Okay, so the first or their thing brand, we, sorry, yeah, their brand. Uh, that's um, well. First, we what we do is we build an offer. So you build one program that you're going to sell that is very niche down that um, that you have to build from. If you don't have an offer, when you talk to people and you say you send them a DM and they're like, "Yes, great, I'm in." What do I get? And you don't know that answer. So we start with we start with an offer. Then we uh, start with building value. Um, so you really, if you get these out of order, it's really complicated to get back. Um, so people like to start with just trying to sell at first, but you have to build your offer. You have to build the value. You have to give value away and you have to reach out to people. But um, the main thing I see is just um, no direction. Um, when, when people post, it's just random. And um, that's fun and that gains followers and everything. But if you're trying to run a business, then it's a little it can become a little tricky. And uh, when you waste time, it gets aggravating. When you get aggravated, you quit. Oh, what was that saying? <laughs> when, uh, when you get, uh, when you don't make money, you get aggravated. And when you get aggravated, you quit. And so what I'm trying, what I do is I get their time management down. I get a bunch of fitness professionals that are like, I have no free time, but I see you out at the Creek and the river and, and a lot. And so but I have all my posts done for that month and I know what I'm going to do. So I, the time management, um, the having a direction to know that I'm going to be trying to sell this week, or I'm going to be building value this week. Um, if you're all over the place, you know, so time management direction. And then, like you said earlier is just general knowledge. Mm -hmm. if, if I looked at my first post that I made back in November, 2020, when I opened, I first made the social media and everything. It, it wasn't attractive. It didn't do anything and it didn't answer any questions. And so. And like, yeah, like we were saying, like we were talking about earlier today, you know, uh, or this morning, there is a right way and a wrong way uh, to do social media. And um, what are some of the wrong ways that you've seen and people do social media? And of course, the ones that, that probably, and I'm not saying everybody, but it seems like there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people that think that they can do it and they don't, are not seeing the increase in engagement followers. Uh, and so what are some of the, I, I guess, how, how do people do social media the wrong way? So the wrong way is doing the whole fill the dreams uh, kind of mentality. If you make the page, they will come, <clears throat> which is 
what everybody thinks because you're so hopeful when you start, which is amazing because that means your passion is there and everything. But so your content is like your first line of defense, right? So people see this, they see you or they should be seeing you and they should see that you're approachable, what you're like, your personal brand and all that. But then where they mess up and they don't, where they don't even want to step in is outreach. They don't want to be social on social media because so many, um, I don't know if you want to call them influencers or people of higher, you know, rank on on social media. Some of the some of the DMs that they send are very pushy. They've got links in them. Um, you know, it's automatically you know they're trying to sell you something. So everybody thinks that's outreach. Yeah. You know, like if you don't like if you message me one time just to say hey I'm gonna I'm not gonna send you a link. Um, so it's it's how you build it up from a cold lead, a warm lead, a hot. So you got to know where to build that relationship. Like we were talking about, just uh, talking to people and getting to know them. And I really liked what you said. How would you say if, if personal relationship is high, then having to sell like that, that was perfect. Yeah. For, if for, uh, when you're, when your relationships are high, sales pressure is low. And when sales pressure is high, that means relationships are low. And I think, yeah, that plays into it. <laughs> that, that is, that is spot on exactly what um, outreach is because if I I'll do, I do outreach every day. I'll say, Hey, to at least 10 new people. And that's seriously all I do. Hey, how are you doing? I like this post. Hope you have a great day. Sometimes I don't get a uh, mention back or a, a message back, but I just delete it and move on. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's, so you got your content is like your frontline defense, but while you're not posting, you have to be social. On social media you have to talk if my, my favorite thing is if somebody follows your page and you don't say anything to them it's like if they walked into your store and they're like hey what products do you sell and you're just like <laughs> yeah you're not <laughs> you saying know? anything so there's no if greeting follow, if somebody follows you they've walked into your store and so um that's what i teach my clients is every time somebody follows you or engages with you in a way that took time you know to to help your business, you should engage with them. And it's like, if you're just, like you said, talking to them at Starbucks, what's your name? How's your day? And how can we network? You know, and how you asked me to be on the podcast. I was like, I'm in. Yeah. You know, it's, it's flattering. It's something that is special to you. And you asked me to be a part of it. And so very inviting, low pressure. Yes. I'd love to do it. And Definitely. So, uh, no, no, no. So, you know, within the, the whole, social media aspect um i've learned that hashtags especially in trying to grow your your brand hashtags are very important mm -hmm. and you know i hear that you need 15 to 30 hashtags um and it's just so you can go on to you you can go on youtube which i live on youtube just gaining knowledge and and then also you know with podcasts with the podcast um talking to entrepreneurs that are just killing it yeah. and just you know really understanding how how the dots are being connected so when it comes to the hashtags clayton why are hashtags so important and do you really in your experience do you need 15 to 30 hashtags each time that you post so what i've learned more and more is like trying to find out hashtags trying to find peak time um trying to find the best whatever if it's a good overall post, it will do well. If you don't put any value in it, it will not. Um, so that's what I've kind of like, you know, if you post at two o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning, um, the whole, that dirty algorithm word is going to decide um, if, you know, but it, if it's a good post, it's a good post, post it. If it's not the perfect post, but you're put, uh, you have value in it that helps your niche, post it. If it's just an introduction, post it. So the perfect post doesn't exist. Um, but with hashtags, I've learned that I put three to five hashtags of the most relevant hashtags to that video. And I, I put it, I still put it in the text. I don't put it in the comment section anymore, which is another trend that changes. Yeah. However many months a year. And so I believe three to five very strong um, useful, relevant hashtags in your context at, at during your or at the bottom of your post, very helpful um, because the people that are actually looking for a business coach or looking for a fitness trainer, if they're that serious, then they are going to put their hashtags, that same hashtag in their search bar 
and find you. So if they find you through that and you find out um, that they did that, they're pretty serious and that's probably a hot lead. And so, you know, um, yeah, that's, that's a, that's, that's awesome. Um, so also when you're talking about the hashtags in the comments, some people have said, don't put the hashtags in the comment, put the hash, especially on Instagram, like put the hashtags like on the, a, a different, different spot where it actually gives you a place to put the hashtags. Uh, Cause they said, if you put the hashtags in the comment, it, it, it'll take it as spam. So how, how true is that? That's, that's a very good point with the whole spam thing. And that's the difference between LinkedIn and Instagram. That's a whole, whole other box of worms to open. Yeah. But, Cause there's no bots on LinkedIn, but with Instagram, I put, like I said, I put at the end of my, uh, what's it called? My signature on my post, I'll put three dots and then I'll put three to five relevant hashtags. It's out of the way. It's not bulky and it's not, um, taking up much space. Um, so I put it in my comments, uh, just to be safe. It, that switched a while ago. Um, a buddy of mine told me about it. And so I've just stuck with that. And then the other thing too is um, I noticed that of course TikTok came on the scene and it's huge and then social media and then they transitioning more to videos. Uh, you see reels being a, a big part. Um, what is the difference between just making a post and actually video? And then are um, I know videos are uh, so very much impactful, more impactful than yeah. than a post. Um, why is that? Well, because Instagram wants to make money. And so yeah. if, you, if you'll go through your feed and you'll look at like a video that you've done, that's not a single image, you can't boost it. But if it's a single post, you can boost it and reach more people, but still not even reach as many as like an, a trending audio that you jump on. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the whole thing. I, I have to gain followers and to retain people. I have done videos for the la or trending audios for the last two weeks and my stats have been more than they have been in a year and a half so what's a trending what's a trending audio versus a video so when you so trending audios are specifically for reels and so when you're scrolling through your explore page and you see okay um, people lip syncing to stuff you want to catch it under like ten thousand reels used and you want to make sure that it's within a week or two if you've seen somebody doing the same lip syncing real audio for about two weeks that might mean it's starting to come down but if you catch it in that really that one week under ten thousand reels you're seeing it more and more on your feed hop on it and Sweet. so so what i do is i i tend i'm i think i'm a funny guy i use humor in my life as much as i can because it's helped me so much and i love it but what i do for my reels or my audios, I do humor all in my, you know, like I'll try to do something funny to get them to laugh. Then I'll get them to read my, my caption, but then in the caption, it's all business there, you know, not much humor. It's straight to it. This is what you need to do to grow. This is what you need to do to save money. Um, but uh, party in the front business on the bottom, you know, so that's good. But that that, that's good. how I use it. And that's off that one, trying not to trying to be an influencer or mimic your favorite influencer. It might work for a little bit, but being natural and being yourself will always win. And so that's, that's where I've kind of settled. You know, I was had a podcast with, um, had an interview with Laura uh, and she's in Dallas. She's a shopper and she's incredible. Uh, she was, she was telling me that's how her Instagram is at like 145,000. Um, but she said, just be you, just yep. be you. Like you don't have to be anybody else nope. be you. Mm -hmm. And she has, uh, she's just, in, just, it was just incredible. Just talking about it. And you're saying the exact same thing. It's just be you. Uh, and that's what people want is they just want you. Yeah. What's the difference uh, for those that know, or those that don't know, what's the difference between Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Well, okay. So on TikTok for the listeners and for you, when we, when you talked about TikTok and Instagram, Instagram doesn't want any other logos on their video. So integrating a TikTok video over to Instagram with your TikTok logo 
they're not going to push it because that's advertising more TikTok. And so do not use saved TikTok videos for Instagram. It will kill your engagement. Instagram will not post that. But so for Instagram or for Facebook, I use, I don't really use social media for personal reasons anymore. I use it just for money. And that's, that's what I have my section, my group in my phone, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, it says money over it. So I'm not going to scroll. I'm not going to look at puppies. I'm either going to try to help people or make money. So um, with Facebook, it's more of like a community kind of deal. And so I use Facebook as a lead magnet for my um, info group. I have an info group full of small business owners. And so for me, it helps a group of people out. We got over 150 people in there, but it's also a warm lead. If anybody's in that group, boom, I can talk to them. I can break the ice. Thank you for being in my info group. How can I help you? So I use Facebook for the info group and more community and to share on my personal page. Um, I don't, I don't really see the reach on Facebook that I do on Instagram. So, but on Instagram, it's reels, it's engagement, it's DMs, it's comments. That, that is my bread and butter. And I believe if Instagram didn't have the bots and the, the spam and all that, it would be just like LinkedIn. But um, Instagram is more for entertainment, eye-catching, kind of like a TikTok, but more business. And with LinkedIn, straight business. Straight people, business. It, it is straight business. There's no bots. There's no spam. Everybody's vetted. Um, you can upgrade to an even better one to widen your search, which... Um, so for all that and for people thinking that, oh, okay, I need TikTok, I need Instagram, I need to be trending on TikTok, pick, if you're just starting or struggling with your business, you need to focus on one and dominate it. And so- Which one do you think that would be? Or is it, is it just, is it um, depending on what you're trying to do and what your business yeah. is or what mm -hmm. your niche is? Yeah, so Facebook is more- <clears throat> And there's just no way around it. It's for the older crowd. If you're trying to attract um, and get members, so more like seniors, more people like that, that is what Facebook has attracted and they're used to it and they know how to use it. But for Instagram, it's more trainers. It's, it's great for personal trainers. Absolutely amazing for them. Um, sports, things like that, the short clips. Um, but Instagram is so flooded with, Insta or with uh, influencers and people that are the same. And so if you don't stand out on Instagram, that, that's like just being yourself. You have to be yourself to stand out. And then, so that'll show. But Instagram's kind of like a little playground. You know, it can go both ways. It can be for entertainment or for business. Um, but then, well, like you said, like with LinkedIn, you're just, you know why you're there. And when you get, when you get a, a message in LinkedIn, you're like, somebody's trying yeah. to put but you can tell it's a virtual system, but you do know that the end product will help you. And once you can start seeing that, like when I became a business owner, when I started getting DMs from mentors, at first I hated it, but then I was like, I'm trying to do the same thing. I got to be nice to these people, you know, because they're people too. Exactly. So the question is, are you ever too old to learn to be proficient at social media? Nope. <clears throat> nope, not, not at all. And that's, <clears throat> that's not even a publicity or it's, it's, you, you can do it because I think an Instagram has made it a lot easier and there's not as many avenues in Instagram. So I think Instagram is probably more user-friendly um, than people think. So nope, you can start whenever. I mean, I remember Gary V said he didn't even start a, a video until he's like 42 yeah something, so. something like that yeah yep. yeah it's uh it's crazy i know you know for me um i i think that if you if you if you want to be good you got to just take the time and we live in a, in a in a day and age where you can find everything on youtube yep. uh, you can find the how to's uh the how to on google i mean you can google it if you can't google it or youtube it uh or go on to Instagram and look for people that are doing it. I always believe in, um, in the, you know, someone says success leaves clues. And so, you know, people are not aware of, of 
they're talking to or their surroundings. I'm always yeah. looking for like, man, successful people leave clues. And so when I look for someone that's successful or doing or being successful in um, in the area that I'm that I need to be successful in is like, you know, oh, closed mouths don't get fed. I'm yeah. always asking, hey, you know, what are you doing? How are you doing it? You know, and just really spending time. You know, one yeah. other thing that I was uh, that that I, that's been a thread, a common thread, is that when it's coming to mentorship, and we're going to talk about here that here in a second, is that you know, I always I always take people to lunch. I'm like, hey, can I take you to lunch? Like, I just don't want to pick your brain. People don't like their brain picked, right? It's like let me let me take you to lunch. And so when I take you to lunch, I'm giving value, and then I'm able to ask and you know ask those questions that give me value. And so. Um, it's, you're never too old to learn. It's just, uh, there's all you got to do is if you can type or you can, uh, voice, uh, speak into your phone and, and search something. I mean, you can, you can totally diff- do it. Um, another question that I had here is, um, what, what is a social media influencer and how do they make money? <laughs> okay. So what I know about social media influencers is they get sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> so if they do a shout out or um, tag, they have to tag um, the company X amount of times or have the product on their table when they're doing video X amount of times. But then I think after, shoot, I think after an amount of an X amount of followers, after you get verified um, per view and stuff that you actually get like a, a check for videos if people yeah. watch them. And so, but what other people don't know is like, that's not, those influencers are making money because they have a team around them. They have a virtual assistant, they have a program writer, they have a outreach specialist. So that's another, like, that's how they're making money. They're capitalizing on their opportunities and they're growing and they're outsourcing. Um, mm-hmm. But that that's the main way, just uh, brand, brand awareness, sponsors, and tons of other things behind the scenes that aren't in their niche, but Exactly. So um, once again, for those that are listening and those that are watching, we have Clayton on with us and and I'm so excited to have Clayton on with us today. Hopefully what we are talking about, you're getting a lot of value out of. And uh, we also want to give you the opportunity to connect with Clayton uh, to either do some one on one coaching uh, or to um, to collaborate. Uh, another question that have here and that I ask a, a little self-development I believe is so important um, you can't pour from an empty cup you know you can't pour what you don't have and so when it comes to self-development for you what is uh, what does that look like is it a, a favorite book, favorite audiobook a podcast a YouTube channel um, if there is like what is your favorite podcast what is your uh, your favorite book or like maybe your favorite YouTube channel um, that you listen to or spend time and is that in the morning is that in the evening like what does that look like for you so self-development for me is 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 very touchy and it gets me emotional because of I, I battle I battled addiction for seven years and then so the one time that I finally that like I got saved and I surrounded myself with good people but the year that I finally decided to do self-development I just read I read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I read um, Atomic Habits and then the faith-based writer, the neurologist, Dr. Caroline Leaf. Man, if people aren't reading her books, she teaches you how to completely restructure your thinking and your habits. All neurologic, it's all science-based, but she also brings in faith because those two can't ever, you know, so they need to be set, but she brings them both in and does it so well. Um, but I mean, yeah, you can't pour from an empty cup. If you don't love yourself, you can't show love to others. So self-development is if you're trying to start a business or you're, you have a business and you're not grounded or you're not, you know, you're not yourself and you feel like you can't ever be in the present, you better, you got to jump on that because life can get pretty miserable when you're living for the future, but remembering the past all the time. Um, yeah. But so self-development, huge. I wish we could talk about that more. But I read um, in the morning. My, my mind is so very active in the morning. I can't lay in bed. Once I get up, it's over. And so I'll go straight to reading. But I love reading self-development books. But 
Dr. Caroline Leaf really transformed how I view success and how I view progression um, because it's just <clears throat> eating that elephant one bite at a time. And so that's where it gets hard. But yes, <clears throat> self-development all the way, pour yourself into it, take a year and just disappear. Take six months and just disappear and work on yourself and um, cut out the people that, you know, just don't, don't um, influence you or build you up and they distract you. So that's what I had to do. <clears throat> Very glad. I did awesome. It. Awesome. No, I'm, and those are two, those are two, uh, it's a good book. Caroline Lee, E A F. L E A F. She is L E A F. She has rewire your brain and think, learn, succeed. And it is, it's, it's great stuff. I can't believe it cost <clears throat> 19 bucks for that book, but it can completely change your life. You hmm. know? So that's, very and, and to my next question, you, you just hit on it is uh, how important is it? And I know it's, it's very important. I, I have a small group. I can probably count them on one hand. Uh, how important is it to surround yourself, especially as a business owner, entrepreneur, or just, a, just an individual <clears throat> surrounding yourself with the right people? Because, uh, you know, they, the old uh, saying is, you know, you are who you hang around, birds of a feather flock together blah, blah, blah. And the list goes on and on. And it's so true is that I can tell, I can tell you your future by, by seeing the people that you hang around and if you want to be successful, hang around successful people. You know, you can only go as high as the people that you hang out with. Um, and I think, you know, um, someone was talking about, um, Maxwell, John Maxwell was talking about the law of the lid can only go as, as, as high, um, your people, if you're managing people, they can only go as high as you are. And it's like, that's where self-development comes in. But bringing it back around is, uh, it's so important. It's so important, Clayton, that you hang out with, and not saying that you've got to cut people away. And sometimes you do got to cut people out of your life and, and you outgrow people. And to me, it's like, I, I have to be cognizant of the fact that I can outgrow people or that people can outgrow me and it's that yeah. you know if you you may be my people you may not be my people you may not be my people right now um and you and and so but um that is so important and i think people a lot of people don't understand that is iron sharpens iron the bible talks yeah. about you know iron sharpening iron mm -hmm. and sharpening iron is not a, a pretty process uh -huh. it's a very like it's a it's a very um hard process what does that look for look like in your life uh from maybe hanging out lessons learned i will just say lessons learned from yeah. from that <clears throat> so i like i told you i i overcame a seven-year whatever addiction and I, I mean, obviously, I think about that all the time to motivate me to keep going to and for where I am now. But I look at those people. I love those those guys or whoever. Um, but it was the same thing every day. No growth, um, no plan, uh, no direction, no hope. And so that rubs off on you. And so you get very comfortable with that. And you do not grow outside your friend group. Fast forward to now. I hang out with business owners, entrepreneurs, um, it, but they don't have to own a business or anything, but it's people that are always trying to progress or help people. And we have networking meetings that we hold or that we used to hold last year. And I had like that epiphany, that kind of breath of air when I looked around and everybody around me was a good person that wanted. Mm -hmm. And so that, that really hit hard. I can't remember which meeting it was, but it all just hit. And then I realized that if I was with those same people, I'd be doing the same stuff. But now it's very, very different. Um, yeah. So my, you know, all those cliches and everything, and you, you were going through them. But so my favorite one lately is you need a plus, a minus, and an equal. You need somebody above you to humble you, somebody below you to teach. And then you need somebody that's the same to ride with so you guys can grow together. And so um, that that has been very important that that is that quote right there is the reason why I hired a mentor and but then when I go to mentor other people and they're like well well who how do you get help if I said I didn't have a mentor I'm missing a piece 
you know, yeah. so, but now I can say, I have a mentor and this is what he's saying. So I'm going to say it to you. So um, being the group of people you hang around, their habits, um, you don't realize how, how easily and how fast they transfer to your habits. You that know, is so true. Is it is it sleeping in an extra hour? Is it going out at night, having a few drinks and being hung over the next morning and wasting that? So you really start to add up lost time. Yeah. You know, they say it's not about the hours in the day. It's how you extract those hours. And um, especially as an entrepreneur, business owner, just a professional or, or anyone, you know, I always believe that you got to be purposeful in everything that you do. And you know, it's easy to let time get away from you and um, especially hanging out with those individuals that are not adding to your life um, and really helping you get to where you, you need to be. And I, I think that that's even just in relationships as well. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I, my wife, you know, she, um, she challenges me <laughs> every single yeah. day and, you know, and, and I challenge her and, uh, and so it's just in all those areas in your life. And it's also, it's, it's something when you finally you start thinking about your circle, your core circle yeah. and how they challenge you. And, and I even believe that you need to have different types of circles. Like you got to have a straight business circle of people that are going to challenge you, but you also need that circle where you can, for lack of better words, like let your hair down. And yeah. those are like your, your friends that know you, like they, like, you know, those friends that know you outside of just business that you can just chill, be yourself. You don't have to, to be all, all business, but, uh, but then you got to have that circle uh, always. Last thing uh, uh, is mentorship. We talked about it quite a bit. You alluded to mentorship. Um, how has, and I believe a lot of times people are like, well, I don't, I can't afford a mentor. You know, I can't afford a mentor. And it's like, you can get a mentor. The mentor doesn't have to, it doesn't cost you anything. And someone even said, you know, mentorship really isn't about people anymore. I mean, it, it is, but mentorship could be a, a YouTube channel. Yeah. It could be, uh, it could be a social media that you're following. Yeah. It could be an influencer, Gary V. Uh, it could be a mentor or other social media influencers as well. Um, and so, when it comes to mentorship, you know, I believe, like I was saying, success leaves clues and that you find successful people. And a lot of times people don't are not aware of of a mentor right in front of their face. If it was a snake, it would bite them. Right. It's like, how do I get a mentor? Take them to lunch, find out what they do, um, build a relationship with them um, is kind of like um you know, how has mentorship, uh, and I know you've talked about it, it's played a very important role in your life. And, you know, tell, tell us a little bit more about mentorship as we're winding, as we're winding down. Gotcha. So um, when I hired my first mentor about a year ago, one of the scariest moments in my life, I don't know why, but it was, it was so scary um, thinking that I had to invest in myself um, that I had to listen to another person tell me how to improve and all that. Um, so for most people, and that's that's where it's hard, it is hard to break in to want a mentor because it's it's different. Not everybody thinks about it. So um, why am I going to invest? What's the outcome? And so you're not getting a product. So you have to wait. It's an investment. So that's the other thing. You know, you're giving money and then you got to wait. But <clears throat> it's it changed my my direction the first one I, I hired I mean completely changed my content completely changed my strategy completely changed my outlook but then it also gave me structure that I pulled into my 90-day program um and so it's being it's having somebody to think outside the box for you that's not in that same mental state so if you're stressed out all the time about your post well my mentor thinks my posts are great I just need to schedule them better align it's it's being able to have that outside that the outside view and it's you pick and you'll know when you pick the right one because they're comforting it's it's not uncomfortable to talk to them you don't feel pushed like my current one that I have right now um I don't like talking about money uh from a young age it just really messed me up I don't like talking about it I know we have to have it to live but this guy has completely conformed to me and has helped me grow from that point so 
it's, it's always about being pushed out of your comfort zone, but it's finding that person that won't make you mad at the same time. Um, yeah, that's it's, true. It's like shopping for a car. You know, you don't want to pick the first one just because it looks good or because of their name, but uh, picking a mentor is uh, for a life coach, a personal trainer, a business coach. Um, I, I, there are so many good results over the bad ones and the bad ones, they didn't want to work. They didn't want it bad enough. So um, the results are there. It's just, can you reach down deep enough? That's, that's the main thing that I get. It has completely changed me. I know people say they can't afford one, but once you get one, you can't afford not to have one. So, you know what, that is, that's interesting because, um, you know, I realize once, and this is even just start giving the volunteering and nonprofit work. And, you know, I'll just like, once, once you start giving, you realize how much you can give and i think that's that place the same as a mentor is like once you get a mentor or pay for a mentor you realize that you know how much more you can pay or or uh yeah yeah, to a mentor and so (laughs) and that's the things like people have to understand like if you if you have zero money you can still get a mentor you just got to work hard and um mentors there's a lot of mentors out there one thing that i like clayton is i love and i think i feel like we've we've become more disconnected as uh generations go by i love talking with older people about history yes world war ii the korean war um we got young people that don't even know about 9 11 right and it's like mentors they have that experience that they bring into the equation and you know having a mentor it's just so important to have have that mentor um and so i want to thank you clayton for for coming on and, and talking with me uh, great conversation those of you are watching uh those of you that are watching and listening we got clayton on clayton is a uh, all things social media uh, and how can people connect with you, Clayton? Uh, what platforms are you on? Email address, phone number, like how, how do they connect to you? So um, best way is through Instagram. Just type in under or just type in fitness compass and a picture of me will pop up and that's the one. So with the camera, <laughs> yeah, with the camera, um, green background. So that or uh, email fitnesscompassllc at gmail.com. Uh, reach out through me th- through there. The uh, first phone call, uh, 45 minutes is always free. Look at that. Oh, yeah, exactly. You, yeah, that first, I love that first phone call. It's just like this podcast. You get to hang out with them and get to know them. So yeah, always exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, thank you so much for the uh, for the time. I appreciate it, thank and you. uh, you've definitely added so much value uh, to those that are going to be watching, listening, and even you know even this podcast here, growing the podcast, growing the audience, the engagement. Uh, one thing that I've been really looking at in my Instagram is my insights, uh, and really working on the engagement, the reach, the following, yep. uh, and then you know, uh, going on to other social media pages that are like mine and commenting, following, and there's a whole, man, there's a strategy behind this. It's insane. It's like an, an eight hour job. Listen, I don't, I've, I've narrowed it down so much to where I don't even engage until I post because when I post and engage, that brings attention to my new post and page. Everything is strategic. Yes. Everything. And so everything on social media is strategic. When I see people responding the same times every day, I'm like, what are they doing? Yeah. And I'll see a post. Oh, that's what they're doing. Yep. Yep. It's funny. A lot of tips and tricks, man. (laughs) 